Hey, Grow Up Kids, I hope that you are having a great week. Before we get to our show, let's head on over and do worship. I used to run around, round, 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 so lost in all of my doubt, doubt, doubt. How is it possible to stay true when the whole
welcome back to The Truth Files. I'm your host, Miss Vicky. This is the show where we bring you the truth and nothing but the truth. We send out our detectives, Maureen and Lawrence, to discover how God is always with us. How do we bring you the truth, you may ask? That's simple. We send our detectives to follow the clues and bring us back all of the facts. Facts are things that are true. They aren't just guesses or made up. Just like our Bible holds nothing but the truth. We have a fascinating case this week. Our detectives, Lawrence and Maury, have been doing an investigation through the book of Job. They have followed clues and reviewed the evidence. Let's see what our detectives have discovered. I'm excited for this case. Hello, Hello. we're so excited. Hello. Welcome detectives. I'm excited to see what you have found out about Job's story. Maureen, why don't you get us started? Why, thank you, Miss Vicky. We are very happy to be here. I must tell you, this case was very interesting. Yes, indeed, you won't believe it. <clears throat> As I was saying, we have followed every clue, we've examined all of the evidence, and we even reviewed video footage to bring you the truth about how God was with Job through the hardest time in his life. Yes, it was very exciting. You see, the clues led us right to the truth. We learned that Job is a man who was a good servant to God. One day, the enemy Satan came before God, and Satan had been wandering over the earth. God asked him a question. Let's roll the tape. Have you ever seen such a good man as my servant Job? Job is an outstanding follower. He follows after me and does what is right. Well, yeah, anybody can be good when he has everything a man could want. A family, a home, livestock, money, and you never let him have anything ever happen to him. Of course he's faithful. He has no idea what it's like to go through a hard time. Let me prove to you that Job will curse your name when he goes through a hard time. He won't last. The moment things get had, he won't know what to do but curse you. Very well. You have my permission to do what you will to all that he has, but you must not hurt Job. <laughs> Job had lost everything, his animals, his servants, even his family. But still, he did not curse God. Watch the tape. All of my servants have died. My animals are gone. My children have died. My money is gone. My house is destroyed. All I have left is my wife and my own life. In the middle of this suffering, Job still turned to God. Keep watching. I came into this world with nothing, and so with nothing I shall leave. Lord gave and the Lord takes away. I shall praise the name of the Lord always. Again, Satan came before God and God spoke to him. Let's look. Where have you come from? Ah, uh, you know, just wandering the earth. Have you seen Job? How even after hardship, he still follows me. Well, if you hurt his body, he wouldn't praise you. He'd curse you. Very well. You may hurt him, but do not kill him. <laughs> it's going to be fun. Satan was allowed to give Job very painful sores all over his oh, body. Take poor a chap. look. Oh, I have sores from my head to my feet. My wife and my friends tell me that I should just turn away from God and die. But God, I will never say anything against you. For months, Job suffered in pain. Everyone thinks I must have done something terrible to upset you. But Lord, I know that can't be true. I always try to remain faithful, so I don't know why this is happening to me. I wonder if you have left me because I don't hear your answers anymore. You must see me as an enemy to make me suffer so much. Job questioned and God answered. It's incredible, keep watching. Job, I am over all things. You don't understand why these things are happening, but I do. I know everything perfectly. You're right, of course you're right. I may not know why I'm hurting, but I know that you have a reason for it. I am so sorry that I ever questioned your goodness and thought that you were my enemy. I take back all the wrong that I have said. After this, God blessed Job with good wealth, health, livestock, and much more. Because Job didn't curse God, he still turned to him in his hard times. God gave him all of those blessings. 
God was and is always in control. My favorite part is that Satan didn't win. Without never seen before video evidence of Satan and God's conversation, it showed God was still in control of the situation and he never left Job's side. That's right. Job went through hard times and he wondered where God was. He thought God saw him as an enemy or that God had left him, but that wasn't true. Just because bad things happen doesn't mean God was his enemy or that God had left him. In the Bible, God continuously says that he is with his people. Like in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5, he says, Never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. So we know God was with Job as he suffered, even if Job didn't realize it. And when God spoke to Job, Job was reminded that God is in control. That's right. And God has a reason for everything. Job could trust God, even if things seemed to be going wrong. In the end, Job chose to say sorry for calling God his enemy because of the sufferings. And Job chose to be faithful to him. And for his faithfulness, he was blessed. The Bible is our evidence. God reminds his people he is with them. In Joshua 1, 9, it says, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord God will be with you wherever you go. And then in Psalm 23, verse 4, it says, Even though... I walk through the darkest valley. I will fear no evil, for you are with me. That's right. And your rod and your staff, they comfort me. God stays with his people. We can trust that God was with Job the whole time. Whole time? Wow, great job, detectives. You definitely showed us once again, God is always with us. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this story. Thank you for reminding us even when we're going through things like Job or we've lost everything, that you are with us. You are not our enemy, but you actually love us and you are there right beside us. Help us to just remember this as we live our days. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. 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 All right, guys. Well, thanks again. Of Talk course. Yes. Uh, we'll yes, see yes. you guys next week. All, All right. right. We'll head out. Cheerio. Now, where did I park my car? Oh, in the car park. Okay, guys, ready for questions with Miss Vicky? Let me go ahead and grab my box. Okay, let's see what question we have today. Hmm, this is a good one. It comes from Myla. She is age eight. It says, why would Jesus die on the cross even though we sin so much? Hmm, that's a great question, Myla. Well, guess what? God sent his son, Jesus, to take our place. In our Bible, it says that the price for sin was death. So God knew back in the beginning when Adam and Eve had sinned that he was going to sin this perfect savior to take our place. So that means we wouldn't have to die for our sin anymore. So yeah, there are times where we still cheat, maybe lie or like not honor our moms and our dads. But as long as you repent, now do you guys know what that means? It means to turn away. So if you turn away from your sins and you ask God for forgiveness, we can know that God has wiped our slate clean. Just because we can ask for forgiveness doesn't mean that we can should continue to do our sin. So make sure you remember, yes, we can ask for forgiveness, but let's try not to do it too much, okay? Make sure you're listening to your parents and you're following what's in this book right here, our God's word. All right, guys, we'll see you next week. Bye.